Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. This video is all about the blood and blood vessels. There are three types of blood vessel and the first type is the artery. Arteries generally carry blood away from the heart and this blood is mostly red oxygenated blood and it is pumped at high pressure by the heart. The arteries need to be structurally able to withstand such high pressure and therefore they have certain features to help them do this. So arteries have thick walls. So these are the thick walls here. They have a thick layer of muscle and elastic fibers and this allows the artery to stretch with each pulse and be able to withstand the high pressure. And when you measure your pulse, it's actually the artery stretching that you feel. And lastly, there's a small lumen, which is the bit that the blood actually flows through. And that it's small to help maintain the high pressure. Moving on to the veins. The veins carry deoxygenated blood towards your heart. And it's usually low in oxygen and it tends to be a purpley red color. You can't feel your pulse on a vein because the blood is moving at low pressure. Therefore the veins don't need a muscular thick wall. Their walls are thinner as you can see on this diagram. And they have a large lumen and they have a large lumen to allow blood to flow through them at a constant rate. Another thing is because blood is flowing at a lower pressure, veins need to have valves to prevent backflow of blood as it moves towards the heart. So having a look at these two diagrams here, diagram on the left shows the valves open and if blood is flowing this way, the valves would allow the blood to flow in that direction. They would be in the open position. However, if blood tried to flow the opposite way, the valves would shut and the blood would not be able to flow backwards. So the valves are there to prevent the backflow of blood in the veins. And they need that because the blood is flowing at low pressure. So the blood needs to be kept moving in the correct direction towards the heart. Okay, the third type of blood vessel is the capillary. Capillaries are the smallest type of blood vessel and they form a huge network of tiny vessels linking the arteries to the veins. They're very narrow and they have very thin walls. So you can see how thin these walls are. They're actually one cell thick and they need to be very narrow to allow them to be close enough to all of our body cells in order to supply them with what they need, nutrients and the substances that they need like oxygen. So the fact that they are very narrow and they have very thin walls helps the diffusion of substances. So substances like glucose and oxygen will be able to diffuse out of the blood and into the cells where they are needed because the cell wall is so thin, those substances can simply diffuse through. And substances like carbon dioxide can easily diffuse out of the cells and into the blood. So carbon dioxide can diffuse through the wall of the capillary and into the blood. So next we need to look at the blood itself and blood is made up of the following constituents. The majority of our blood is made up of plasma and we'll look at each of these in turn. Red blood cells and then the white blood cells and platelets make up a very small amount of our blood. So imagine this was a test tube and you had blood and you managed to separate out all the different parts of the blood, this is roughly speaking what it would look like and how much of each thing you would have. So let's start with the plasma. Blood plasma is a yellow liquid and it transports all of your blood cells and other substances around your body. So for example, urea. 
Urea is a waste product made in the liver and it's carried in the plasma to your kidneys and then the kidneys remove it from your blood and it's released as urine. So urea ends up as urine once the kidneys have removed it from the blood. And urea is carried in the blood plasma and the plasma carries things like glucose and carbon dioxide as well and all these substances as well as all of your blood cells are suspended in the plasma. So your blood is a suspension of all the other blood cells and all of those substances suspended in the plasma. Moving on to the red blood cells. The red blood cells pick up oxygen from the lungs and they carry it around the body to where it's needed. And they have some adaptations here that help it to do this job most efficiently. First of all, they are biconcave which means if you look at a red blood cell from the side, it would look something like this. So this is just a side view of a red blood cell. And this is the biconcave shape. And that shape increases the surface area so that oxygen can diffuse through. And it also allows the red blood cell to fit through very narrow capillaries. So they're biconcave. They also contain a pigment called hemoglobin and hemoglobin binds with oxygen so that the cell can carry the oxygen around. It forms a compound called oxyhemoglobin when the hemoglobin binds with the oxygen and that allows the red blood cell to carry that oxygen to wherever it's needed. And thirdly, red blood cells don't have a nucleus. And the reason they don't have a nucleus is because the red blood cell needs as much space as possible for hemoglobin and carrying oxygen. So a nucleus would basically be a waste of space for the red blood cell because its entire job is just to carry oxygen. So it has as much space as possible reserved for hemoglobin and oxygen. So there's no nucleus. And moving on to the platelets, Platelets are small fragments of cells and they help the blood clot, forming a scab. So the scab will seal the wound and help to protect against infection. And lastly, we have white blood cells. So white blood cells are part of the immune system and there are many different types of white blood cell, but the two that we're interested in right now are one, the type that produces antibodies against microorganisms and secondly the other type of white blood cells that engulf and digest microorganisms and we don't have many white blood cells they would all fit into this section of our blood along with the platelets okay so that was the blood and blood vessels i hope this video helped make sure you like comment share and subscribe and I'll see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching.